Okay, now next up is go to loops. Um, we're almost at the end, don't worry. This gets a little more confusing. Um, hopefully you'll still be able to understand what I'm doing. So, let's say we begin with... Um, let's get somewhere. Let's code up the bomb example now. Print bomb starting. And then we go... Uh, no, we'll do all the initialization, which is a term for all the starting stuff set before the print. It's bomb starting. Set variable 1 to 10. So this will be a beginning number. And, um, well, now we go bmath variable 1. Um, no, we're saving to, yeah, we're saving to variable 1, and we're saying 1 minus 1. So we're subtracting 1 from variable 1 and saving it to itself. Very, it's a rather confusing example. If we made this variable 2 or something, it would have been a little easier to understand, maybe. But that's how it is. So what this will do is it will take 10 and subtract 1 from it and save it to where 10 originally was. So it's lowering it by 1 every time. But it's only doing this once. No. Well, for now. Print B1. So this should print 9. Which, actually, that's a glitch because it needs to start on 10. So we'll print and then do the math. Or maybe we should just start on the 11. That'll make this much easier. Okay. Forget all that. Um, just put N at the end already. Um, so this prints the answer. And this will only do it once, though. It'll say 9. It'll say 10. And then it'll just finish because of N. And N is required here, by the way. You have to have it there. So, what we're going to do instead is go to loop. So this will go to loop, but loop doesn't exist yet. So, we'll put loop here. Note those two double dots over here and here. That indicates that it's a marker for the go to. So what it's going to do now is it's going to take 11, subtract 1, so it makes it 10, then prints 10. Then it goes to loop. So we're going to loop. Then we're subtracting 1. We have 9. Print 9. Go to loop. Subtract 1. We have 8. Print 8. Go to loop. And so forth. Now, you might be wondering why is end there? Well, it's just good coding practice, as they call it. You just have it there. It's a good thing to have in case something random goes wrong and it misses this command. Just just have it there. It's good practice. So now this code in, in uh, practice, if it worked, let's see what it does. Uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and then you will see it goes to 255. That's called overflow or well, underflow in this case. It's due to how it works. There's a way to fix this in the code, which we will be showing you next with the if statements. So yeah. Okay. Let's um, go over to that code. Okay, and lastly we will learn if statements. So let's take this bomb and make it explode. Because as you saw, it kind of fails. Now I'm actually recording these examples later. Well, the examples running later. So it might not have worked. This code. So I'm hoping it does. If it didn't, then it'll look 
different to the working code, obviously. So we will just add some code here. Um, I could do one of two things here. So first, if variable one is equal to zero, this is the if syntax. So we have if and then something like the variable is equal to or whatever is bigger than, smaller than, not or equal or whatever to another number. This could be a variable as well. In this case it's a number. And we could do and or we could say boom or you know, print boom but that won't end it so let's just do end so this command doesn't have to be at the end just because it is end so, so what this does if one is zero then end otherwise if it's not then skip this go directly to the next one so if this condition is false if one does not equal zero if it isn't equal to zero then it skips whatever this is now if you wanted more code you could say here if you wanted more than just one command you could go go to if if then example and then if then put all your code here so you could put all your code down here maybe go back here I don't know. So that's how you would do extra code, but we're only doing one line here. So, end. So if this isn't one, isn't equal to zero, we're going to loop back here. And so we have a bomb, a rather lame bomb that just ends the program when it's countdown. So let's rename this to countdown or something. And let's show you this working. Okay, so before I show you this code, um, when I cut recording and put to put the file on the SD card, I added this change I did to the same piece to the other code. I added the wait 100 statement between, like over here, between the print and the if statements. We have the original code here. It's the new. I added the little wait statement. Okay, so let's test that. 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, end. So it exploded. Well, that's the theory. So we fixed that bug we had in the other time. You know, the starting again at 255, not being much of a bomb. So let's look at what we have here. We, you know, we know all this stuff now. We have a wait statement. The reason it waited after printing zero is because we have print zero, then it's waiting, and then it checks the if. So I should have probably moved the wait statement over there. But no, no matter. So what it did is it sees is this variable that we just printed zero, which in this case it was, and then it was end, and then all these cases, it just went from if to the go to loop. This may have been the most confusing sentence I've ever said. And I'm very, very sorry if you didn't understand what I just said. I'm not exactly a great teacher. But if you have any questions, any question at all, be sure to leave it in the comments. I will try my best to reply. So get making your code. This is all that's currently been implemented. There's one more thing that's been implemented, well, I'm working on, is um, a command called run which I'm still working on right now. It basically, it opens another file of code. So you can, uh, for all those programmers, you, you should know what the stack is. A program stack. I mean, that's what the, it basically is. For those not so good programmers out there, it's user functions like void, simulate game tick, and then 
arguments. Except we're not having arguments, the program will have direct access to the variables that the original code used. Also a little confusing, but we'll be able to run files of code from here. Which means it's also basically possible to create a whole operating system in just NS Basic. Could be a pretty lame operating system because you wouldn't have multitasking. We could probably make an interpreter within this, but no point in making an interpreter in an interpreter on already a very so computer. Yeah, I'm doing it to fancy computer talk. If you didn't understand any of that, ignore what I just said. But there you go. If you have any more questions on code problems, if these flags are confusing, if you're wondering why there must be an underscore there, if this looks confusing or wondering why there's a B, there's a B, which by the way is for byte, because I'm making integer math later, don't worry about that either. So there's that. Um, post your code and I will reply to you with what LOS did. By the way, in order to upload the code, what I'm doing is taking an SD card, putting it into my laptop, um, uploading the code via Notepad++ over here, and taking that SD card out and putting it back into LOS. So that's how I do it. But there's also another solution. There's also an alternative solution here. This little interpreter made by Jack Wilson. Wilston. Sorry, if I pronounce your name wrong, I suck with names. So, you can you can put your code in here and it will give you the output here. Problem is, you cannot use wait. That command will not work in this interpreter. Also, you can only do it 30 times. So, this is not live at all. It doesn't show you 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't show you it's working. And you can't give it, you won't be able to give it inputs. So what it does is it runs this code on the server and then it shows you the results. So I don't know. If we reload the page with the default code and then we run that, it you know you can't see delays or anything. So um, that's it, I guess. Comment, rate, subscribe, um Follow me on Twitter. If you were following me on Twitter, you would know that I've been working in this programming language. And I hope you have fun lear playing around NS Basic. One last thing, I'm keeping this forum post updated like a blog. So I keep all the latest LOS stuff here. And I also answer questions. And this, You can also put your code here. Let's put your code here. Just type it in there. If you have a form account, of course. So, um, yeah, that's it. And, um, bye, guys.